Hello, everybody. I am going to begin demonstrating the projects of the Elenco Snap Circuits Extreme 750 kit. There's a total of 750 projects, which include 692 conventional projects plus 73 projects that require you to use a computer. And I still have the disc, I believe, for this kit. Now, the, the version, again, the version of the Snap Circuits kit that I have is 12 years old. So if you have a newer version of this kit, you may not have a CD. You may have to download the program, the software needed for this set of projects. But without further ado, I am going to begin with the first project. Project one is electric light and switch. You just turn on the slide switch and the L1 lamp comes on. This lamp is 2.5 volts. Project two is DC motor and switch. When I turn on the slide switch, the motor with the fan on top spins. This is an example of electrical power being converted into mechanical power via the motor. And these types of motors are found on devices like fans, drills, electric toothbrushes, and toy trains that use electricity to operate. Project three is sound activated switch. The speaker is attached to the main circuit via the black and white jumper wires. And the reason for that is so that you can tap or clap right by the whistle chip and the speaker will play music. The reason why the speaker is not directly connected to the circuit, even though you can attach it there, is because the speaker might produce vibrations that will reactivate the whistle chip and defeat the purpose of the circuit. I can do it one more time. You do have to tap it with a little effort. And there you have it. Project four is adjusting sound level. As you can see, I put the R1 resistor here. And when I turn on the slide switch, the sound, the music is not as loud as in the previous project. You can tap the whistle chip just like before, but now the speaker can be connected directly to the circuit because it won't produce any vibrations that will activate the whistle chip again. Resistors are used to restrict the flow of current through a circuit in order to either reduce its performance, like example, to keep sound quiet or to of prevent damage to electronic components. Project five is lamp and fan in series. When I turn on the slide switch, the fan spins and the lamp comes on. You may not notice for the motor, but you'll see that the lamp is pretty dim. Both of these components are connected in series, meaning that they both are share the same circuit for like the same path for current to flow through. And therefore the individual components cannot get full voltage. Now, if I was to remove the fan from the motor and then turn on the switch, 
you'll see that the lamp is even dimmer. But the motor is actually spinning faster because it doesn't have to deal with as much weight from the fan blade and therefore it uses more voltage and the lamp cannot get as much. Project 6 is lamp and fan in parallel. Now both of these components have their own pathway for current to flow through. So when I turn on the switch, the fan and lamp are now at full power because they each have, again, have their own pathway to receive the full voltage from the batteries. The batteries are generating a combined three volts. Now I can remove the fan from the motor, but that won't interfere with the performance of the lamp because it still is receiving its own current. Project 7 is light emitting diode. I have the red LED included, and when I turn on the slide switch, the LED comes on. LED stands for light emitting diode. It is a small component that can produce light. And LEDs have lots of practical applications because they are small, compact, durable, and efficient. They are also cool to the touch. They can be very bright and they last a very long time. LEDs like this one are typically used as indicator lights in devices such as radios, televisions, computers, or clocks. But recently, they have become increasingly used for lighting applications in your home or business because of all the advantages that they have over other types of lighting such as incandescent bulbs and even CFL bulbs. The downside to LEDs though is that they can be more costly but in the uh, long run they can save you a lot of energy and money and this, they can be beneficial for the environment too. Can you think of something that you use every day with an LED included in it? Project 8 is one direction for LED. I rotated the red LED so that the positive end is on the right. Now when I turn on the slide switch, nothing happens. That's because current can only flow through a light emitting diode in one direction. It cannot flow both ways. And the LED acts like a check valve to enable the current to flow in only one direction. If I was to rotate the LED, then it will come on because now current can flow through it in this direction. Project 9 is conduction detector. For this project, you would place any of a variety of materials between the ends of these two jumper wires and see whether or not that material will conduct electricity. If it does, the LED will come on. If it doesn't, then it will stay off. I'm going to first use a bend paper clip because that's what the manual says to use. And when I place it, I'm going to just move these, bend these wires in a little bit. The LED comes on. Metal is an excellent conductor of electricity, especially steel, so the LED will stay on. Now I can try this wrench. Again, the LED lights up. Now I'm going to try a rubber band. When I place the rubber band into against the two contacts, you'll see that the red LED does not come on. And that's because rubber does not conduct electricity. It's a good insulator. 
which is a material that does not allow electricity to flow through it. Now, some materials are semiconductive, like my fingers, depending on how sweaty they are or moist they are, they may allow at least some current to flow. You can wet your fingers and the LED may or may not come on. It does not. But there is more, your fingers have more resi electrical resistance, which limits the flow of current. So that's why the LED does not light up in this case. But you could use this circuit as a good way to detect whether or not a particular material is a conductor or an insulator of electricity. If it's a semiconductor, the LED may only be dim rather than at full brightness. Project 10 is Space War Alarm Combo. I have both the alarm and Space War integrated circuits included in this circuit. And when I turn on the slide switch, you're going to hear a police car siren plus lots of different sounds that may be identical to those from a space war in a science fiction film. And you can wave your hand over the photoresistor to change the sounds and also push the press switch multiple times. I may be able to demonstrate the individual sounds in a, another project that may solely involve the Space War Integrated Circuit. I don't know why the bulb is included, but I don't know if it's to just limit the current flowing through the circuit if it's acting like a resistor. I'm not sure. Project 11 is flying saucer. I rotated the motor so that the negative end is near the positive end of the battery holder. Then when I turn on the slide switch, the motor will and fan will spin, but as soon as I turn it off, the fan itself will lift off the motor like a flying saucer. You can do it again. Make sure that the fan is secure on the motor before you turn on the switch. You might wanna let it spin for a few moments and then turn off the switch. And there you have it. The flying saucer works best when both batteries are fresh. The reason why the fan flies off the motor when it's connected in the opposite direction is because the fan is pushing air down rather than pushing it up when it's spinning in the other direction. Once the switch is turned off, the fan will unlock from the motor shaft and fly up. If the fan doesn't fly off, you could turn the slide switch on and off several times rapidly when it's at full speed. In fact, I'm just going to quickly try that to see if I can make it go higher. Nope, no difference really, but there you have it. Project 12 is decreasing saucer lift. I included the L1 lamp in the circuit, but the motor is still connected in the opposite direction, the negative side closest to the battery holder. The motor spins more slowly now that the lamp is acting like a resistor, restricting the current flowing through the motor. And when I turn off the slide switch, the motor does not, the fan does not lift off the motor. It's possible maybe if the batteries were f completely fresh, it would work, but it does not right now. Number 13 is the two-speed fan. I have both the slide switch and the press switch included in this circuit, 
and I'm first going to turn on the former. The motor spins, but not very fast. However, when I push and hold down the press switch, the lamp goes out, but the fan rotates at full speed now. That's because pushing the press switch bypasses the lamp, which is included, normal, which is otherwise included in this circuit and restricts the current flowing through the motor. Now that the lamp is no longer in the circuit, all the voltage from the batteries goes to the motor. Now, if I had another slide switch here, I could have the motor on at full speed without having to hold any buttons down. And then just to turn the motor off completely, turn off the slide switch. Project 14 is the fuse. I'm going to turn on the slide switch and insert this two snap wire. And then I'm going to hold down the press switch. The fan now rotates at full speed and the light is shorted. And then when I remove this two snap wire, everything stops. The motor comes to a complete stop. This is to act like a fuse that in a real circuit that pops out if the circuit is overloaded with too much current. This is to prevent damage to electrical components and even fires that may start if parts get too hot. And then you can reset the fuse by putting the two snap wire back in place and the circuit is functional again. In the same way, you can reset real life fuses so that your components work again once you solve whatever problem they may have and the fuse no longer detects anything that is not right. Project 15 is musical doorbell. I have the music integrated circuit completed and when you turn on the slide switch, it will play a song one time and then stop. So I let it play and then I'm going to push the press switch and the red LED flashes, but after I release it, the happy birthday song continues to play. It's not very loud. I'll do it again. But there are a lot of small integrated circuits like these that you can find in a lot of toys and other electronic devices, especially those used for entertaining young children, have very small integrated circuits, no bigger than a pinhead, that can store music or even words for entertaining or educating young children. So integrated circuits have lots of advantages, especially considering how small they are and can be incorporated into even very small electronics.